Welcome everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Bring Your Data to Life with Power BI. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Susan Hopart, and I'm the online training producer here at TechSoup, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this webinar. As we get ready for the, today's webinar, I wanted to remind you that the entire month of February is going to be dedicated to falling in love with your data. We're kicking off the month with this Power BI presentation, and throughout the month of February we're going to be hosting a series of webinars on data tools, data analytic tools, and other fun things including Silk and Tableau. I also want to thank you for taking the time to answer our registration questions to ensure that the presentation is relevant to the important work you do. Also know that your opinion is important to us and it will help improve our training, so please complete our survey at the end of this webinar. I want to make sure everyone is comfortable with using our webinar platform. On the bottom left-hand column, is a chat box. This chat box is for you to use. You can chat in questions at any time or if you're having any problems viewing the slides or hearing the audio. During the presentation, we'll be, we will be queuing questions for answer at the end. If you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using the link in your registration or reminder email. Keeping in mind we do have the slide deck, and there's going to be a live demonstration of Power BI as well. If you're hearing an echo through your computer speakers or have any issues with audio, you can dial in using the toll-free line listed in your registration email. You are being recorded. You're going to be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar page in about a week. This is where we share all of our webinar recordings and announce upcoming webinars. You should check it out at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also view recorded webinars and videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube slash TechSoup video. Again, in a few days you will receive an email with a link to the recorded presentation as well as any resources we share with you today. If you're following along with Twitter, you can tweet us at TechSoup or hashtag TSWebinars. Joining us today is Jen Underwood, a Microsoft Principal Program Manager of Business Intelligence and Analytics. She works with external groups, customers, channel partners, MVPs, BI professionals, and application developers to better connect the outside world to engineering. Throughout most of her more than 20-year career, she has been researching, designing, and implementing data warehousing, business intelligence, and predictive analytics solutions. We welcome Jen from Microsoft. Also on the back end today we have Ali Bizdeekin and Kevin Lowe who are helping with our technology. We're going to talk a little bit about today's slides um, and today's objectives. The first thing we're going to do is explore Power BI's many easy-to-use functions for visual data exploration. We're going to demonstrate how to get rapid, actionable insights from any data, identify how nonprofits and libraries can use Power BI, and answer your questions. The next thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about TechSoup. TechSoup is headquartered here in San Francisco, California, and we want to know where you are. So take a minute, go into the chat box, and Give us a shout out from where you are, the city and state you are coming from, or the country. While you do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about TechSoup. We are a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. We work to empower organizations around the world to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources to help them achieve their mission. You can see from our map here we serve almost every country in the world. We have 62 partner NGOs around the world. The need is global, and we have a dedicated website for countries outside of the U.S. at www.techsoup.global. This is where people outside of the states would access technology donations. Wow, it looks like we have folks from Tampa, Florida, New Jersey, someone from sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome! Wow, we have people from all over the country 
Thank you so much for joining us today. We've helped organizations get more than $5.2 billion in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. These technology products and grants come from more than 100 corporate and foundation partners like Microsoft who is joining us today. Before I turn this over to Jen, I would like to ask a question. We have one live poll. We want to know how much do you know about Power BI? You have a couple of choices here. You can just click on the screen. You have no Power BI knowledge. Are you a beginner? Intermediate? Do you know enough to be dangerous? Or are you a Ninja Power BI master? So go ahead and I'll give you a few seconds. Oh, it looks like the majority of you don't have any Power BI knowledge, which is consistent with some of our registration data as well. This is good. We're going to give you a good foundation when we talk about Power BI. Oh, looks like beginners come tied, coming in close. All right, I'm going to close the poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, all right, let's take a look at the results. Okay, so about 70% of you have no Power BI knowledge. Or some of you are beginners, about 23%. And then a few of you that are brave enough to admit you're enough to be dangerous. That's me as well. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is turn this over to Jen, and she's going to be talking through her slides. All right, Jen. Thank you, Susan. Well, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm really excited to introduce a lot of the newcomers to Power BI as well as some of the folks that have already been playing around. Uh, if you are not familiar with Power BI, you can go to www.powerbi.com, and within five minutes you should be able to, if you put in your organizational email address, it's jenunderwood at nonprofit.com, be able to get up and running. And that was the goal of our engineering team, was to make it very, very quick. There is a free account, and there's a premium account at $9 a month. It's about $120 a year. So we're talking about very reasonable and free, cool data tools for you. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide. The opportunity with data is much bigger than you may think it is. Essentially, we have $1.6 trillion data dividend available to businesses and organizations that embrace data over the next four years. And for nonprofits, I've worked in predictive analytics. You know, a lot of times you have to be very careful with your scarce resources of how to target well, uh, you know, the, the funding that you get, the mailings that you get, the donors that you may uh, target with predictive analytics, and certainly you can take it much, much further and do a lot more with Power BI than you have before without necessarily needing a data scientist on your staff. Um, and those are the types of things that our team is working on when we talk about diverse data, new analytics, and more people. What you'll see is us automating and making things like predictive analytics accessible to anybody and everybody, including yourself. Let's go to the next slide. So what is Power BI? Essentially, we have its dashboards, so having that pulse of your organization. Maybe you have the staffing data, you have your investment data, the funding data, all in one quick view. You can track your dashboards with a basic 360 view of the entire organization. Uh, you can also track data in real time. So if you're dealing with emergency situations and you need to get very quick real-time data and reports of what's happening on the spot, we do support real-time dashboards and analytics. You can drill through to underlying reports. And when we have a demo today, we'll show you that interactive reporting, fully contextual, and you can also pin visualizations and KPIs from reports. Another thing that Power BI allows you to do, we'll ch chat about this in a moment, is allowing you to just pin your Excel dashboards and your Excel reporting. Let's go to the next slide. So 
Microsoft is a leader in business intelligence and has been for a very long time. Um, essentially, this is the latest Forrester wave that comes out for agile business intelligence uh, platforms, and we scored quite quite high in that specific area. So if you're not familiar with Microsoft um, and BI, we, we are certainly one of the recognized leaders. Let's go to the next slide. More recently, if folks are familiar with PC Magazine, uh, you always get those reviews, uh, like a consumer reports per se, of all the different, it sounds like you're going to be reviewing a few other tools on this mix in this next month, and the data loving month, what a cool month. Uh, essentially, PC Magazine did an article uh, right at the New Year, so by David Strom on December 31st, and Power BI rocked the self-service BI uh, reviews. The other nice thing that is in this particular um, unbiased rating per se, I am biased obviously on the public team, but this unbiased review provides uh, some insight that might be relevant to you as well as resources and you know what they used to get up to speed uh, with Power BI. Let's go to the next slide. So how are folks literally using Power BI today? I think this particular case study, when I think about Metro Bank, is a fantastic example of how easy it is to get up and running. These are solutions historically. I've been in this space of BI and data warehousing. We called it decision support back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, they were up and running in a week having a full enterprise-wide, um, able to, to share their knowledge and insights with everyone in the, the organization super quickly. And that's one of the things when you think about these tools is how quick can you get up and running and how quick can you get functional with them? Uh, there's just something you have to call uh, a technical person in to help you. Um, you shouldn't necessarily have to do that. You should be able to have a, a very robust solution and, and to know you just the easy button and go in five minutes when you sign up for Power BI um, at your fingertips. That's the, one of the core benefits of running what we call software as a solution, uh, Power BI in the cloud. Next slide. For Mediacom, that's another great example of when I think about nonprofits in general. So Mediacom, what they do is they look at campaigns. And think about if you're a nonprofit, how often you have to target for donors. I certainly, uh, the Humane Society has found me. I'm an animal lover, so I know that they're targeting me at certain times of the year with certain pictures of dogs and cats in, in distress, essentially. And what Mediacom's doing with their campaigns is finding folks like me with soft spots in their hearts for certain causes and helping target their campaign uh, analytics, so the performance of you know, who are their donors, how much have they donated, what is their likelihood to donate again um, in the next, so that you know, you're really targeting your use of electronic versus maybe um, a mailing that's a physical mailing that comes to the house. And let's go to the next slide. So part of the in general, it is newer, so I was not surprised at all to see that there were folks not familiar with it. Um, it, it is one of our newer applications. We had a V1 that we launched many, a couple of years ago, and we just came to market with V2 this past summer, so July of 2015. And already we've seen immense uh, exponential levels of growth, quite frankly. Um, so right now we have over 90,000, I think it's 100,000 um, organizations worldwide in 185 countries. So if you are an international nonprofit that needs to have you know, your business intelligence in the native languages that your individual units operate in, we do support uh, Power BI in many, many languages across 185 countries today, if not more than that today. When it comes to some of the data sources that we're supporting, uh, things like maybe you were using QuickBooks. I know when I had a little business, I, I loved my QuickBooks. We support Salesforce, Marketo, uh, many other software as a service. Uh, Sugar CRM, if you know, you're using some of the CRMs from a premium perspective. We've got some other open source ones out there. Google Analytics, um, that's another one of my favorite data sources. So the variety of data sources is quite broad. 
um, as well as some of the on-premise data. So when we talk about on-premises data, we're talking about things like SQL Server, or maybe you have an access database, or Excel is by far um, the most popular data source, or you may have a CSV file on um, that type of thing. Okay, let's go with the next one. So when we, as a product team, designed Power BI, we wanted to provide a solution that allowed folks to get started really, really quickly. And often, things like Google Analytics, you're really building the same types of analytics for most shops. You'll want to see how many visitors went to your site, um, what's the click through rate, who's abandoning the site quickly, what are, you know, what are the poor performing pages. For, I have a, a blog, janunderwood.com, and I check with Google Analytics. I'm looking at what is the most popular posts in my blogs that folks have, what are the topics that they're interested in. And those are all what we provide is a pre-built solution that all you have to do is connect and get data. You point to the Google Analytics icon, and we've prepackaged your data model, the dashboards and reports, and then it'll allow you to just put in your domain information that you want to track, and it will pre-populate with all of your data and refresh nightly with, with your data incrementally. And it does allow you to customize those. So if you want to just have um, an instant Google Analytics dashboard, maybe you want to combine that with, say, an Excel file then to see, you know, are my campaigns, I'm spending this money on these click-through ads or these pop-up ads or you know, these little ads on sites, are they really working and, you know, are people really landing on my landing page, um, you can easily mash up those two data sources together. And the Google Analytics one, you really should be able to get started with that within five minutes. And certainly you could just upload your Excel file and have a mashup dashboard of the complete solution. And you'll see there's many other ones on there. We've worked with Salesforce, with QuickBooks, uh, with Marketo, and all these uh, Adobe Analytics, etc. And worked with them to come up with a model that makes the most sense with their data. So again, you're getting a full cradle to grave solution and you're just simply populating with your own data with a login. So it shouldn't be it should be really, really easy to get up and running and then you can start having fun customizing it. Let's go to the next slide. From a dashboards perspective, we have it's called Free Power BI Desktop, and you know some of the other tools that you may be looking at uh, may charge up to three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a person for their desktop solution. This is an interesting decision by Satya Nadella, uh, essentially to provide a enterprise capable reporting solution. It's not stripped down; it has the full enterprise capabilities for free. And um, it, it's really a, an interesting and compelling solution, and it gets better. We have monthly updates of this. Um, what it allows you to do is, is literally visually drag and drop um, data from a data source and combine data and, and clean data in data sources. So that's another thing. Usually when you're, you're working with data, it's dirty. So we provide the preparation tools as well, all cooked into one free desktop project. It comes in 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, we allow you to you know, import in what we call custom visuals, and hopefully we'll be able to show that today. And essentially, that allows you, if there's not a visualization that you have in the box, we have a whole gallery of them um, that you can even map. Say if you had to map out uh, a location, maybe it's a school, and, or you have traffic that you're wanting to, you know, maybe it's an event that you're having and you want to you know, map out or heat map out the, the traffic patterns at that event. You can do lots of interesting things with custom visuals. And the last point on here is R integration. So if you do if I do have any power users that are playing around with R and the R libraries and things like ggplot, that might be a little too technical for this audience. Uh, but if you are, we certainly support that capability as well. On to the next slide. So this next slide, I'm just giving you a taste for some of the visualization types that we have. We allow you to do things like advanced time slicers, chord diagrams, network diagrams, sand keys, the word clouds. And we add to this, uh, we have um, an external 
you know, community called uh, it's communitypowerbi.com that contributes to these libraries. Usually, we try to get one out a week, um, and sometimes there's more than that. Uh, right now, we have a contest going on, so I'm expecting to to get a few more than we normally would uh, this particular month. But we're always adding to it, and you can see uh, you can get really, really creative. We have one in there, and it may not it may not stick out to you in this particular form. It's called Enlightened Aquarium. We literally have a data visualization that the fish swim faster, and the aquarium uh, has animations in there. The, the weeds will grow as long as you're selling. If you're not selling, the fish don't do so good, and they start to float at the top. It's a very, very creative. A way in a fun way to think about data differently when we talk about experience your data and talking about your data in different ways. Um, that's one of the super creative ways somebody in the community was communicating and motivating folks with data was keeping the fish alive. And we'll move on to the next one. Last but not least, and, and especially if you're working with groups maybe that are you know, any, you know, they can be anywhere. So you'll say uh, if you're a Red Cross or you're one of those types of groups where you're out and about, maybe again, the Indian Society that targets me, you're out and saving animals or saving people. Um, you need to have that information at your fingertips on the spot. And it would really help to know, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm at this location and maybe I need to have five more water bottles. Do we have that in our inventory right now at the tent or do I need to order more? Um, we have all of the Power BI dashboards and reports are mobile friendly. And they're mobile friendly across all the different device types. I shouldn't say all the device types, but from Windows devices, the phones and tablets, as well as iOS phones and tablets, and Android phones and tablets. If you have something else, I know someone once showed me it was a Dolphin phone. I thought that was really interesting. Um, it was something from another country. Um, as long as the browser supports HTML5, you should be able to access and leverage your your data, your Power BI data, and your reporting inside the mobile app. One super cool thing with the Power BI mobile apps is we have alerting, and that is something that not all the tools have in the market. So if you need to, for instance, know when the water is getting low, maybe your inventory is beyond two cases at a particular site, um, you can get an automated alert on your phone so you know that your, not only do you have your reporting, but it's actionable. You can do something about it, again, in the field, anytime, anywhere. And on the next slide, I have a picture of what the mobile apps look like. And again, the mobile apps are free. So if you go into your, your Google Play App Store, in my case I have an iPhone, so I go to the, the iPhone Store. Uh, if you go into those device stores, you can even just play around with these apps right now and not even necessarily you can play with the samples that we have in there to get a feeling for the capabilities and what you can do with these things. Um, but we do have the ability, again, to have the user-defined alerting that's very, very popular, as well as uh, being able to annotate and maybe put a circle, draw a circle on your phone and then send it to somebody as an email to again take action with the data that you're seeing uh, to be a bit more proactive and not necessarily wait until you have to get into the office. So this is probably all well and good, but you want to see it. So there's, there's nothing better than seeing and experiencing Power BI because that makes all the difference. Again, you can play around yourself at PowerBI.com. Uh, but we'll have Jeff hopefully here give a demo so you can see these awesome capabilities. Thank you, Jen. Yes, we're most fortunate today. We have two presenters. Jeff Lumpkin is also going to be joining us um, and sharing his desktop momentarily so he can demo this amazing, these amazing features. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, would you provide me with some guidance on how to share my desktop, please? Absolutely. Top navigation. It should be your second or third link. It says Share. Okay. And click on Share, and we'll be able to see your desktop. Okay. So while Jeff is sharing his desktop, Jen, we did get a couple of questions come in. This might be a good time as he's gearing up his desktop. Looks like it's coming up. Jeff, it, it does look like it's coming up now. 
Okay, very good. Great. So Jen had referenced a number of ways in which we are able to uh, share the information contained in our Power BI files. What you're seeing now is, is Power BI Desktop. I have a similar view that is on the Power BI service. So in fact, this is, is a web browser. And I've created a, a quick dashboard for my users to understand uh, these, this file. What we're looking at here is mapping of different regions uh, in the state of Washington. This is the upper left. If we come down, if we move one slide to the right, we can see individual store locations. And dropping down, we see two views of sales. So one is uh, regions within Washington State, uh, such as Metro, Puget Sound, uh, Islands. And then a second is sales by month, August, September, and October. It's quite easy for me to drill down further right from the service and click into uh, the more detailed file still on the service and actually interact with this in a live way. Uh, so sometimes it does take a while to load. And so let, let me bring you into the sheet. So here we are. This is a, a breakdown of the way this business functions, starting at the top with sales, and then transactions per month times the revenue per transaction. Uh, and then a further breakdown, transactions per month is the product of stores times transactions per store, and revenue per transaction is the product of units per transaction times revenue per unit. I can use this interactively. So if I want to check on what's happening in the metro region, I will click Metro, and we'll see every feature here adjust to show just data related to the metro data. I can also uh, look at this data from a number of different perspectives over time. So here we see the uh, time adjusted views in, from a number of different ways. So the green graph has sales by day. To the right, the upper right is, I'm sorry, quantity by month. Then on the lower section, we have quantity by day, quantity by hour during the day, and then quantity by day of the week broken out by region. Let me show you one of my favorite capabilities, which is the drill down capability. So if you look closely uh, at the transactions by day, in the green columns, you'll see that one particular column stands out far above the others. This is, took place on August 11th. If I wish to drill down further and understand what happened on that day, I will come to the graph on the upper right and expand it so it takes up the full screen, and then enable drill down. So I'll click through August and get to the week of August 15th. Click again and see the, the days contained within that fiscal week. Click one more time. And now I'm able to identify the county in, in which that large sale took place. Click a second time, I see the city in which it took place. Further takes me down to the very address. So what I've been able to do in just a few clicks is get down to one out of one million rows that are contained in this data set to identify the data anomaly. Jen, is there uh, anything else I can show for you today? Well, we have about a half an hour left, and I budgeted about 20 minutes for demos. So showing PowerBI.com, maybe one of the Clinton packs, and, and that experience would be awesome. Okay, let me. I'm happy to do that. So we have designed PowerBI.com as a way to, to be able to share uh, data quite easily. So I'm going to show you one of the ways which we obtain data. This is clicking Get Data, and then I will use go to Content Pack Library. So I have a number of options in terms of being able to obtain data. One is coming into Content Pack Library, my organization. And then this will contain data sets that uh, have been posted 
by Microsoft employees for use by other Microsoft employees. So you can see here the very wide variety of data sets that we can, can make use of. Uh, and these have both uh, internal business functions as well as, as external functions. One of my favorites is this Seattle 520 bridge simulation. So this looks at, at traffic coming across the bridge. One of the great challenges for Microsoft employees is, uh, who live in Seattle is crossing the 520 bridge to work every day. I can show you this live. Uh, and what this is doing is bringing in a stream of data as traffic is, is crossing the bridge. So there are sensors on this bridge which uh, look at the traffic volume and traffic speeds. And this updates itself about every 30 seconds. So you can see it just updated right there. This is an interesting application for people wishing to commute. Uh, but the, the other real world use cases are quite interesting. So uh, this is used by people on factory floors to understand production flow through a, a, a line. Uh, it's also used to study uh, say tanks uh, filling up with, with various liquids such as oil or water, etc. So this allows you to monitor in real time what is happening with your operation. Any questions here? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Jeff. That's, that's amazing. And I can see how this could relate to a lot of nonprofits. Nonprofits like libraries would want to look at their circulation over time, or they'd want to look at their web pages and how many are visited, how frequently. It's a beautiful yes, dashboard. I, absolutely. It, it's, it, it's quite well designed, and it's meant you know, for, for personalized use. It, it's so easy to make a dashboard. Perhaps I, I can show you an example of how that's done. Let me take you to a report, a that would report be awesome. that I have. Yeah. Okay. So this is a, a report that I use to monitor the consulting uh, sales business at Microsoft. And I have here a, a number of different visualizations which I've created. So I can highlight one of those visualizations and see this this pin button here. And when I click this, I will get an option of creating a new dashboard or uh, using an existing dashboard. So I will have a new dashboard, and I will call this uh, Thursday example. And here, click pin. And then And pin. Okay. And it, now there's a notification in the upper right that has been pinned to my dashboard. If I come up here, here in the dashboard section, uh, we'll look for Thursday dashboard. And here we see it with an, an asterisk to indicate this is a new dashboard. And it's right there. So I can, one of the other great features about Power BI as a service is that we can use Azure to ask questions directly of the data. So I will type in newer sold VTB in Canada. And it will give us this number. And so we can see strong performance from Canada. If I like this, I can pin this question and answer into my Thursday example dashboard, pin, come back to the dashboard, and then change the title Uh, to, to show that it is from Canada, right there, right. Uh, Newark sold variance to budget in Canada. And then click Apply, and it will show us there. Now, I use this a lot when I'm wanting to communicate uh, with people who may not be terribly familiar with the data, but are, want to explore it. So when I click this tile, the newer sold variance to budget in Canada, it brings us back to the question as it was written. So then a user can take out Canada and type in LATAM, which is the area name that we have for Latin America. 
And once this renders, then I can similarly pin this to the dashboard uh, and put up all the most important visualizations that I have. So I'll just give you a brief glimpse of the real dashboard that I use to track this very same data set. And this is one that I update on a daily basis and share with my business partners. Sorry. Uh, the data set appears to be loading quite slowly. Uh, here's another one based on, on that same data set. So I can update this <clears throat> on a daily basis, share it out to business partners, and alert them when there is something that we need to, to focus on. So for instance, over here I have a button which is qualified coverage. This is indicating red, meaning that we need to look at coverage uh, for our consulting services. Question. Okay. Uh, let me finally come back to the service and, and show how this can be published. So in Power BI, uh, the desktop version, we have three different modes. The first mode is a visualization mode where I visualize data. The second mode is a data model mode. So what we're showing here are different data tables, and I've joined them together to create a cube. Uh, and this cube means that I can bring in data, very different data sources, and then use those data sources uh, to drive analytics that, that weren't possible uh, before, meaning I can, can look at uh, weather information, combine that with population growth, with education information, and health information, put those all together in a single mashup, and then present a unified analytical tool uh, which allows me to make decisions or gather insights which weren't possible when I was looking at those data sources separately. I then take them, add them into a table, and then very quickly produce visualizations. So to create a new visualization, I'll have a new page. Over on the far side are my different tables. So I will take month and bring in month. So we see August, September, October. And then look at my data field and choose uh, revenue per transaction and drag that in. And so now I have these three different tables, and then I can just over here choose the different type of visualizations that I want. So for instance, here I have a bar chart. Uh, I can change that very quickly to what we call a tree map. And then if I like that, I'll just pin it up here and then add data labels. And then choose to make another visualization. Uh, so let's, let's perhaps build out a map view. So let me look at, I will take stores and look at city, and then add sales data to that. Excuse me. Okay. And then I can color those by, for instance, county. So now we're able to look at store sales colored by county and see that our, our distribution is concentrated very heavily in this metro area, Seattle, Edmond, and Olympia, uh, with fewer stores as we move out into more rural areas of the state. I can then take this and resize it, and again, move it over here. So building these visuals is up. Building these, these tables up is quite easy. Then I publish. So there's a publish button up on the ribbon. I will click that, and this will bring us straight into uh, the service. So what it's doing now is publishing this from my desktop into the service. And once that's done, then I can come to the service and find this uh, in my report section. Right. Having done that, I then create a dashboard in a matter of minutes and then share that out with business partners.
So any any questions based on, on what I've shown right now? You make it seem so easy, Jess. Um, I know a couple of our uh, learners on today are curious about how they take an Excel um, table and import that into this service. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to, to do that. Let me show you how I would do that. One of the, the most powerful features of Power BI Desktop is the ease with which we can bring data sources into the tool. And let me show you up on top. So you see Get Data. I will click that open. And it starts out with the most common ways of getting data. So the first is Excel. Second is SQL Server, Analysis Services uh, from the web, even more. Uh, this is showing the different Azure uh, services from which we can get data. We'll go down and see Facebook, Google Analytics, Salesforce, uh, SAP HANA, etc. So there are dozens of data sources that we've written APIs for to, to facilitate getting data. I'm going to get data from an Excel file. So I'm going to connect and come to this is, is will come to my hard drive. And come here and identify uh, this table as the table I want. And then I'll click and it will establish a link to that Excel file and I'll click JCI. And then it will let me look at all these columns. I can load those, and they will come right into Excel. So th this is quite a big file. It's, it's 87 megabytes in size, so it will take a couple minutes to load. But once that's done, I, I can immediately start to, to create visualizations from it. Or I can, can work in the back end to create a more complex data model, and then uh, which gives me more flexibility. So now let's look and see this table here. So there's the table. And in fact, let, let me get some more uh, connecting tables to help us with that. So DIM stands for Dimension Table. So I will pull this in and identify uh, market, brand, fiscal year, month, org, product, and load those tables. And already uh, it, it will identify connections for me uh, very quickly here. So it's already created these connections live. I don't have to do anything else. So let's just take the example of month connected to the data table JCI. It's connecting period with the field period. Then in my visualization section, I can come to month, pull in fiscal month, and then come to my data table and pull in uh, one moment. The previous year's sales amount. And then I only have three months of data here for this. So what I can do then is filter out the other months so they don't show up. So I will just say December. November, and October. And now I just have those three months. And again, I'm creating visualizations just immediately. Another really powerful tool that we have is the ability to shape data before it even gets loaded. So let me show you another a bit more complex way of getting data. So I'll come to SQL Analysis Services, click that, and then type in the name of the analysis service. And what this will do is access this library of services. And then I'm going to very quickly build a, a data set. So I will select Scenario, which will be Actual, Budget, and Prior Years. Item, no, I still want item. Uh, geography, so I will bring Area, Area Group, and region. 
fiscal period will be fiscal month alt name. And then measures are our actual data numbers. So let me come and select Consulting New Work Sold and Consulting New Work Sold Public Sector. Now I'm going to edit this live. And th this has really changed the way that I work. So for example, in Scenario, there are many different options. I only want to bring in uh, a few of them. So I will select Actual, Budget, Forecast, and Prior, which is, means the past year. And very quickly it has identified uh, what I've wanted and eliminated the others. I have Consulting New Work Sold, which is our consulting sales. And then I have New Work Sold Public Sector. Now, one of the things I'm missing is commercial. So public sector is the other half of commercial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a custom column, and it will be New Work Sold Commercial. Then I will insert Consulting New Work Sold, subtract Consulting New Work Sold Public Sector, and add it in. And so now this has created a column for me. I will remove uh, that you can see here that there are some, some values in the cells called null. So I'm going to do something called replace values in, in all three columns. I will replace these values. And where it says null, I will replace it with 0. So now watch, the nulls have turned to 0. And then this I think is one of the most powerful functions we have here is I will unpivot the columns. So now I have three columns of data, Consulting New Works Sold, Consulting New Works Sold Public Sector, and Commercial. I will highlight those three columns, and then I will unpivot the columns. And what happens is I've created now a single column of data with this new column called Attributes. So I've changed the name of Attributes to Type. Not typo, type. Okay. And then I will ensure that all of the values in here are numbers. So I will change type uh, to decimal number. And so you can see on the right side all these steps that I've done to transform this data. Having done that, I'll come back, close and apply. And now it's bringing this brand new data set right into my data model right here. And it's called EMR. And this is incredibly powerful in terms of being able to bring data in quickly, transform it, and make it usable, and start applying it right away to your analytics. Wow. Uh, another fun. Jeff, thank that that was an amazing demonstration of how easy it is to use this tool. And um, I have a quick question for you. Um, a lot of our folks that are importing files to use in this analytics tool. Is there like a, a maximum file size? Um, you, you brought in a file that was very, very large, but some folks are just wondering if their file is too large, what they would need to do to import it. Uh, I've not encountered an upper limit, but you know, if you're talking say 500 meg file, then you may well encounter issues. And to be honest, I, I, I'm an actual user, not a business user, so I, I can't speak to to that in a very eloquent manner. Perhaps Jen can. Can you, can you repeat the question? Yeah, it was what's the maximum file size that can be imported into Power BI? Ooh, it depends. Um, because there's compression algorithms, and usually if you have strings in your data that are very, very long, so you like product descriptions or long text descriptions, it will be less than if you bring in, say, a bunch of numbers because of the compression algorithms and the repeating. So you can usually get a couple hundred million easy in there, and then it just depends how many strings you have. Thanks very much, Shen. I'd like to show you Thanks. one other example. And, and, and this example I think may well be particularly useful for, for the people on this call. And this is getting data from, from the web. So 
I, I demonstrate quite a bit to people who are not from the United States, and when they come, they could be nervous about uh, perceptions uh, of the U.S. being dangerous. So this is a table which shows United States crime rates by city. It's on Wikipedia. I'll come up to the URL, copy the URL, and then come into Power BI Desktop, and I'll just open up a new file in Power BI Desktop. And then I'll be able to go out to Wikipedia. Here we see Get Data. So I'll come down uh, to Other Sources, and here's a web icon. So I'll click the web icon, Connect, and then enter that URL. And from Power BI Desktop, it will go out, find the web, and then locate tables that are on this, this web site. And we can see here New Mexico, Albuquerque, uh, population is 558,000. Let's just confirm that's the same. So we'll come back to Wikipedia, and here is Albuquerque, 558,000. So then I want to edit this because I see even in this preview, I see issues with the data. So the first is that the top row is replicating itself. The second is that these numbers are aligned on the left side of the cell, not on the right side of the cell. And that means, in fact, that they're text right now. They're not numeric. So I'll click Edit. Uh, and the first thing I'll do is just filter out this state. And so now we're not replicating anymore. Then highlight the, all the numeric columns and change type. from. So you can see that they're text right now. There's the check by text. But I'll change those to decimal number. And then I can add custom columns again to look at things on a per capita basis as opposed to a whole number basis. So we'll look at assault rate. And I will enter assault, divide this by population, hit OK, and then close and bring this table live into Power BI. As you're bringing that into um, the Power BI site and showing yep. everyone the visualization. I just did want to let everyone know we are closing in on our uh, almost the end of the hour, and we do have a couple of questions. Um, I know that our uh, learners were anticipating um, a little Q&A session, so I wanted to give them that opportunity as you show this on the screen. Okay, I, I can can certainly end it at, at any time. So maybe okay. let's go to questions. This, you know, it sounds like we need to do a second level for folks to really get to learn even more uh, functionalities of this program. Um, but that was amazing. Thank you so much for showing the drag and drop and the ease with which people can use this program. Um, we have a couple of questions, and uh, Jen and Jeff, if you could help us answer these. Um, one of them is about uh, Mac. Um, are there, is Mac supported by this program, or are there any plans to add that platform? So I get that question often. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially, you can use the browser on any platform to, to author the reports themselves and the dashboards themselves. It's the data modeling piece that you would need to use something like Parallels, the, the virtualization software. Um, on, on your Mac. Great. Thank you. Um, some, some folks are wondering if it works with the desktop version of QuickBooks or DonorPerfect. Ooh, great question. So I played around with the ODBC connector that comes with QuickBooks. So yeah, you absolutely can um, use that. And, and what I'm showing right here now is, is the Get Data functionality. And you can see that, in fact, we are running a beta version of a QuickBooks connector. So my estimate is that within uh, the next quarter, we will have this as a fully production version of a QuickBooks connector. Thank you. Um, a couple of our learners are curious about the security of the data. So could you talk a little bit about um, sharing and how the, the data within these profiles is protected? So we do have, and I would recommend reading, um, if you go to powerbi.com support the docs, 
We have an entire white paper on security in general. Microsoft takes it very, very seriously. That's why we don't allow, per se, a Gmail address or a Yahoo address. It really needs to be an organization, uh, a true domain, per se, that's accessing the data. We have down to role-based security. So depending upon you know, how you're rolling this out in your organization, you might use what's called an enterprise gateway that you then sync with your user lists and you define who can have access to the data, who cannot. And the reports themselves, even when you log in, so if Jen logged in, she wouldn't get to see everybody's, say, utilization or everybody's sales. I'd only see my own sales, but my manager could see everybody's sales just by logging in because it's using what's called role-based security on the data. Um, the details on you know, sharing and you know the the technology underneath that we're protecting the data, et cetera, how it how it moves to the cloud through the the Azure Azure Service Bus in the background. It doesn't require any ports to be opened, but I highly recommend that white paper. Um, it's security because it is a very deep topic, um, and detailed topic, and I I don't want to gloss over it. In here, just know that we have an entire white paper on it, and we take it very, very seriously. This is not HIPAA compliant today, so if you do have sensitive medical information, do not put it on there. Um, but all that is covered in, in the white paper. Thank you. And we'll be able to address that in our Q&A document that we'll be able to send out with a link to this presentation. Um, I appreciate that answer. Um, one other quick question. We talked a lot about importing data into Power BI. Some folks out there, they're wondering, well, you know, now I have all this great visualization. How am I going to take it and let's say put it into a PowerPoint? Well, and I had, and it was two slides down. I had, you know, experiencing your data with some other things in here and also uh, collaborate and share and telling stories with your data. And there's a couple really cool ways you can do that. You can, we have it's a partner add-in called DevScope. So similar to like an Excel add-in, we have an add-in that allows you to log in and share this in PowerPoint decks. We're also very soon going to be uh, integrating with Sway, which allows you to tell data stories online for free. If you haven't looked at Sway.com, it is so cool. It's like PowerPoint on steroids, but on the web. Great. Thank you. Um, this hour has gone by so quickly. Jeff and Jen, thank you so much for collaborating together to, to get both the demo and the PowerPoint slides. Um, I did want to ask our um, participants right now, before we sign off, we want to know one thing that you learned today. And I know you learned a lot about Power BI, or one thing that you're going to share with a colleague. So take a moment and chat in the chat box one thing that you're going to that you learned or that you're going to share. And as you're doing that, I'm also going to talk to you about our upcoming webinars and events for the month of February. Again, it's fall in love with your data. The next presentation we have is next week, five tips to bring your organization's story to life using Silk. Um, we also have another presentation on getting started with digitization for libraries. Um, throughout February, we're also going to have PowerPoints, I mean, presentations on Tableau and QuickBooks. So we hope you have the opportunity to join us for those. We, will, we have recorded this presentation, and we will be producing it for everyone to watch after the event along with some Q&A. Um, I do want to thank our folks from Microsoft. They're a, a, an amazing partner of ours, and we commend them for their partnership and commitment to us to help nonprofits and libraries. So Jen and Jeff, thank you so much for coming today. We really appreciate it. And thank you for having us too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And Jeff, thanks so much for jumping in there. Much appreciated. Yep, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. Great. And on the back end here, I'd like to thank Kevin Lowe and Ali Bizdikian for helping us out. All of you on the call today and on the webinar, thank you so much. Thank you for staying a few minutes after the end. And don't forget to complete the survey. And a special thanks to our ReadyTalk sponsor. Goodbye everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your week.